<laughs> you look so grown up. How come I can't wear high heels? Because you're still a kid. Mom, is Grandma's wedding going to be fun? Yeah, sure. There's going to be music and dancing. How and... come Grandma said she'd rather stick a needle in her eye? Uh, <laughs> well, th th that's an old Irish saying that, um, sounds like the opposite of what it means. Hello? Hiya, Jillian! What a gorgeous dress. Now all you need are grown-up shoes. I know. Where's Maxine? Some emergency at work. But this is crunch time. I need the whole team to execute. A good wedding is like a rocket launch. One little screw up and you're looking at Apollo 13. I'm on the team. I'll help. That's very sweet, Lauren, but this is grown-up time. For example, the wedding cake. How tall does Maxine want it to be? Grandma doesn't care about the cake. Well, no. She says wedding cake tastes like toothpaste and she wants to elope. Oh. Did I help? Here's the thing, Jillian. It's just that for us, the wedding still seems so far away. Well, I believe in forethought and planning. Please give this questionnaire to Maxine. Have her fill it out as soon as possible. This is five pages long. Good night, sweetheart. Sleep tight. I hope you have wonderful dreams. I'd rather stick a needle in my eye. Oh. Hmm. So what do you think? Should I give this to Grandma or should I rip it up? Aunt Jillian said I should get high heels. You're right. I'll rip it up. Mr. Van Exel just whispered into my ear was deadbeat dad. He whispered out of politeness. He's like that, but uh, I have no problem with the term. So are you a deadbeat dad, Mr. Simmons? I'm not a deadbeat anything, Your Honor. I've never missed a payment for anything I've owed, ever. My client is a well-regarded small businessman, Your Honor. Simmons Dry Cleaning. Well-regarded by whom? Other small businessmen. He overstarches. <laughs> There was a time you had a right to comment, Lydia. But once you took up with Mr. Motorcycle there, you gave up that right. Talk to my lawyer. Uh, hello. In this courtroom, everything goes through me. All right, fine. I'll tell you. Three months since he's paid me a cent. I call that missing a payment. All right, that's true. But listen to what I'm saying here. Our divorce says that I gotta pay for my son. Okay, that's the deal. I'll pay. But it doesn't say I have to support her boyfriend. How many motorcycles does the jerk need? Uh, okay, I'm sensing a lot of feelings here that might be expressed in a more appropriate arena. I would like both parties to attend mediation with Mr. Van Exel. Your Honor, I'm certain that Mr. Van Exel is extremely competent as a mediator, but I promise you that given the rancor which exists between my client and her ex-husband... I concur with complainant's counsel, Your Honor. We have tried and tried to bring the Simmons to some reasonable middle ground. Believe us, this is going to be solved in court, not through any kind of... Reasonable uh, interlocution. I have the utmost faith in Mr. Van Exel. Next case. That's out. Breathe in like this. If I breathe in when I already got breath, then my lungs will explode. <laughs> That's true. I guess I better work on my timing. Yeah, yeah, you better work on your timing. Dr. McCarty. Oh, yeah, Willie, uh, breathe out. 
That was a good one. <laughs> yes, it was, baby. Well, I'm not finding any problems. I think it's safe to take him home. Are you sure? Well, whatever it was, it's past. It could have been a passing allergy, one-time asthma attack. It's tough to know. Keep an eye on him. You're not going to keep him overnight? No need. Is Dr. Redekin? in? <laughs> she has the night off. Uh, there's no offense. It's just she knows Willie. She's pretty. <laughs> he thinks she's pretty. <laughs> she is very pretty, and she's a very good doctor, but so am I, and I'm happy to tell you there's nothing wrong with Willie. You can all go home. What's going to happen? Well, we're waiting for a judge to arrive and decide. How's your dolly feeling? I think she might be cold. Oh. Take my jacket. Everything's going to be fine, Katie. I promise you. Maxine. See? The judge is here. So if you will wait with Lisa, I'll be right back. This has never happened to me before. When I decide to remove a child, the police are supposed to help me, not argue. I know. The whole idea of an administrative hold is to get the child away from the source of danger as quickly as possible, especially when the source of danger is the parents. We'll clear it up with the judge. I'm not happy about being dragged into this. Neither is DCF, Judge Booten. All right, as I understand it, Ms. Gray is endeavoring to remove a minor child on a 96-hour administrative hold? In complete accordance with the law. The 96-hour hold is to be used only in cases when the child is in imminent physical danger, of which there is none. And you are? Zach Wiley, the Ordonius' lawyer. I persuaded the police that there was, in fact, no imminent danger and that DCF was acting outside the law. At which point I decided I needed some direction from someone farther up the food chain. Uh, Miss Gray, what imminent danger to the child did you perceive? The Ordonezes were having a little party when I dropped by. Mr. Ordonez was having a sexual intercourse under the dining room table with two other people, neither of whom was Mrs. Ordonez. She, meanwhile, was upstairs enjoying someone else's company in the bathtub. Three other bon vivants were screaming with pleasure on the seven-year-old daughter's bed. <clears throat> Where was the uh, minor child? Katie was in her closet. Your Honor, my clients don't deny that the party was a bit out of hand, but Katie was perfectly safe. The child is traumatized. Perhaps because she thought she was being kidnapped. Mm. Well, at first glance, I'd say Ms. Gray had good reason to remove the child. Lifestyle issues can be blown out of proportion, as Your Honor is particularly well aware. Ms. Gray has never taken custody of a child gratuitously, Judge Booten. If she felt the child was in danger, then the child was in danger. It appears the house is now empty of guests. Yes, Your Honor. Though I didn't check the attic, so copulation could still be occurring there. I'm vacating DCF's administrative action and ordering the minor child returned to the custody of her parents pending a hearing. Your Honor. The child will be safe tonight, Miss Gray. You will return Katie Ordonez to the custody of her parents. I will not. Judge Booten, you can order DCF to return Katie Ordonez to her criminally negligent parents, but you cannot order me to do it personally. I believe I can. Let's put it to the test, shall we? Your officer, perhaps you would like to inform the Ordonez of the judge's decision. Get him in court, Maxine. She'll be all right. She will not. Good night. You just blackmailed a judge. I'd love to go through the transcript of the proceedings and have you point out where that happened. 22 years ago, Judge Booten's wife divorced him over allegations of swinging, as I believe it was then called. Really? I was not aware. Well, in that case, I expect Judge Booten will recuse himself. But I'm not too worried. A lot of these judges lead secret lives. Since your daughter is a judge, I expect you know exactly what I'm talking about. That 
that's what you told me yesterday. Three months? Do you have any idea what might happen to this little girl in three months? You do that. Is my timing bad? Uh, I'm uh, dealing with a small child trapped in a house which is used for orgies. Oh, my goodness. Can't you do something? I'm trying to, Jillian. Any chance you could put your sorrows in a box and just stuff them in the attic? What an appealing idea that is. <laughs> We have several unresolved wedding issues. For example, how many dancers would you like? Dancers? Professionals. To get the guests up and moving. They, they have those. Uh -huh. We'll say six dancers. Now, where would you like your press conference? Why am I having a press conference? Because Jared is rich and famous. Six TV stations in Connecticut, two in Rhode Island the morning of the ceremony. OK, fine. We'll hold all interviews until after the wedding. Now you see, we're making some real headway. And the photo shoot is set for 9 a.m. 9 a.m. in the morning? Hair and makeup at 6. Jillian, I simply cannot do this. I regret everything about this insanely pompous wedding. I, I only agreed to this spectacle because I was too lazy to plan anything myself. But I have allowed you to run roughshod over my feelings. Now I'm filled with existential dread. I wish I was joining a nunnery. Ah. Oh. I just had to get that off my chest. You don't want the wedding? I'll cancel it. I'll uninvite the guests. I'll unrent the hall. I'll do everything else that needs to be done. Please don't overreact. You're on your own, Maxine. Go ahead. Have whatever kind of two-bit wedding you'd like. Now, what are you going to do? About my wedding, which is in the future? Nothing. About a little girl in the present who was trapped with dangerous parents because we failed to do our jobs? I don't know. We didn't fail to do our jobs, Maxine. Judge Booten just didn't want to see those pictures of him wearing nipple clamps in the papers again. I am not going to let this one go. Judge made his decision. It's out of our hands. Look, judges and social workers are like rock and paper. Rock wins. I believe if you check the game, paper covers rock. Rock breaks scissors. The part you didn't hear is the judges beat social workers. Twenty-five hundred a month I'm supposed to pay. She won't even let me see my kid. Seeing Joel is not a right, it is a privilege. Actually, according to the terms of divorce... Tell him he's got to pay up already. Joel needs new clothes, hockey equipment... Harleys, trips to Atlantic City for Mr. Tattoo... Mr. Simmons, are you able to fulfill your financial obligation? Yes. Is your business doing all right? Absolutely. I have the money. I have the money, just not for her grease monkey boyfriend. If we can keep the focus on Joel... Yeah, what is your fixation on dragging Nick into everything? Hey, I'm not the one who dragged that pea brain out of a dumpster and into our lives. That was you. Let's try communicating through me instead of insulting each other. Look, oh. Joel, okay, let's take the focus off of Nick and keep it on Joel. All right, fine. Nick is a much better father figure to Joel than he ever was. Forget Nick. Nick doesn't What kind of exist. example are you setting for our son? You're warping his image of women. Trolling bars, bringing low lights home. Can he talk to me like that? Yes. You know why? Because I'm Joel's father. Oh, well, yeah? Joel's no, father you're not. Me. Not what? Joel's father. He's not Joel's real father. What does that do to his rights? Oh, God. <clears throat> Katie, hello. Why aren't you in school? Nobody woke up. 
Are you alone? I don't know. I didn't look. Well, let's look now. Katie, were there people here last night? Yes, those naked people. When the music started, I went into my castle. In your closet. Did anyone come into your room? I don't know. I put all my clothes on top of me, so I couldn't see or hear anything. How's your dolly? Did she get anything to eat today? No, she's hungry. Well, uh, what is her very favorite thing to eat? Pancakes. Me too. Wait, don't wake them up. They get really, really mad if you wake them up. I'll be very careful. Let them sleep, and we'll go get some pancakes. And we'll leave them a little goodbye note. Apparently mediation was not a smashing success. No. We tried to warn you, Your Honor. Judge Gray, my client is moving to modify the terms of custody. To what? He no longer desires visitation rights. Fine with me. Additionally, he also wishes to immediately terminate all child support on the basis that Joel Simmons is not actually his child. Plus, is there any way I can get back the money I already paid her under false pretenses? Your Honor, as Joel's guardian ad litem, I will point out that regardless of biological factors, Mr. Simmons is a stop from denying paternity. I'll take a sperm test. Has Mr. Simmons been apprised of the law? I was quite clear, Your Honor. So, so, Mr. Simmons, you understand that in the eyes of the law, you are Joel's father? That's what he said. How can they say I'm his father when I'm not? Well, because the definition of father is a lot more than a sperm donor. Is it just me? Or is this crazy? Why should I pay for some other guy's kid? The law is biased towards the best interest of the child. You have been Joel's father in every sense of the word since he was born. You, you loved him, didn't you? Yes. But she made a fool of me. Now she wants me to pay for the privilege of being her fool. Watch out, my friend. She'll snow you someday, same as me. Mr. Simmons, I, I don't want to send you to jail. Thank you. But I will. For how long? Ms. Brady, would you please inform your client that he is about to, to set off on a terrible path? Your Honor, I haven't had much success in that area. Morgan is obstinate and stubborn and pig-headed. You might as well put him in jail right now. Uh, Mr. Bloom, you might want to point out to your client that her lack of discretion is not only going to send her ex-husband to jail, but cut off those child custody payments she wants so badly. What? That's what I'm talking about. He doesn't have to pay if he goes to prison? Uh, this hearing will reconvene tomorrow at 10 a.m. All rise. You defied a judge and snatched the kid again? Technically, the first one was during a party. This one was for drug paraphernalia. Technically, you defied a judge. What would you have done? Well, I would have waited at least a week before I pulled a spot check. If you don't... Here we are again. What do you want? I'm giving you the chance to return, Katie, before I launch several suits against DCF and both of you personally. That's very generous of you. We'll take our chances in court. I'd reconsider. It won't matter to the old lady. She's marrying rich. But you, Mr. Potter, with a foster child in jail for murder, I'm not sure you can bear much more scandal. Don't hit him, Sean, don't hit him. He'd love it if you hit him. Okay, then. See you in court.
I've been considering the Simmons case. Please tell me you found a reason to recuse us. Yourself. I'm, I'm at, yourself. You recuse yourself. I wish. Would you please tell Mr. Bloom that I may want to speak to Joel Simmons tomorrow? After all you went through about Lauren? I I'm not going to make him choose between two parents, believe me. I'll make sure he's present. Don't forget your homework on the Weisenberger motion. Not tonight. Pardon me? Bruce, if it's one thing I learned from my custody battle with Michael, it's that I have to be a better mother. I understand. And if that means a lighter docket, it means a lighter docket. Okay. You know, some evenings I have barely one hour to spend with Lauren. I spend all of that nagging her to take a bath, do her homework, and then I'm up reading motions till the wee hours. Wake up cranky. Yes. And I start nagging her again. Hurry up, you're gonna be late. It's just, it's not, it's not good parenting. And Judge Gray, you do not have to explain. I agree with you. You do? Mm. I think I've, I think I've lost perspective. Hey, do, do you want to play hooky tomorrow? Take our girls on a picnic? Now you've lost perspective. Good. You're still here. I hear you had quite the exciting day, Mom. Who told you that? You're famous. You snatched the same little girl twice against a judge's orders. As, as a member of the judiciary, I am shocked and horrified. The parents have a lawyer, Zach Wiley. Oh. You know him? I try to keep him off your docket. He slams up everything he touches. He has already compromised Judge Booten. That's quite a charge, Mom. Are you taking it as a presiding judge? No, I don't have any evidence. He's smart. I have to go back into court. What I need to know is this. How do I pull a judge who will not be intimidated by him? Well, Ma, I can't steer you toward a judge. Of course not. That's unethical. It would be like insider trading. She really can't. I apologize, of course. It's just that there's this little girl, and I... I'm sorry. I apologize. I'll leave. No, I'll leave. You stay here with the well-connected court services officer while I, the utterly ethical judge, Sometimes we court services officers get together and we swap stuff on the docket unofficially. There's no harm in that. None at all. <coughs> hey, Willie, what brings you back here? My dad's car. He has a fever. Any other symptoms? Like what? Uh, nausea, cramps, cough, uh, earache. Yeah, yeah. Which? All of them. Uh, is Dr. Redica here tonight? No, but I'm here. I'm, I'm always here. Robert. Lorraine. Hi, Willie. I don't want a shot. Don't worry. I don't think you're going to need one. She likes to give shots. Yeah, and I don't think I'm finding any problems. So I'm pretty sure you're going to be able to go home. But he was short of breath about an hour ago. It, maybe you should keep him for observation. Mr. Edwards, uh, last November 6th, we kept Willie overnight, but nothing was wrong. Again, December 9th. January 3rd, January 16th. We, we kept him overnight, but everything checked out fine. And then again, last night, you brought him in, and then and there was nothing wrong. Well, by the time we got him here, it passed. Whatever it was. What if it happens again? And doesn't pass. Dr. McCarty, can we confer for a moment? Yeah. Whoa, they're in love. <laughs> Dr. Redeker told the Edwards to bring Willie in any time they were worried and we'd observe him overnight. Dr. Redeker said that? Dr. Lily Redeker? Because that, that, that doesn't sound like the Dr. Lily Redeker I know and know. 
she's obsessed with limited resources and picking your battles, and she told them that? Grandfather stood looking down on the sleeping child until the moon again disappeared behind the clouds and he could see no more. Good night. Mom, when Grandpa gets married, will Jerry be my new grandpa? Do you have step-grandpa? Well, what do I call him? Well, I don't know. I guess figure out something that he'd like, something that you're comfortable with. If I come, Grandpa, will you come, Daddy? Well, the two aren't necessarily link noodle. Besides, uh, I'm a little old to call somebody Daddy. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want to call somebody else Daddy if you got married again. Right. Are you getting married again? Well, I guess I'd have to start dating for that to happen. Well, you better get on that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe right after income tax. Good night. Good night, Mom. I was thirsty. I can see that. Can I get you anything else? No, thank you. Okay, let's get you to bed so you can get some sleep. I wake up a lot. That's a fact. <gasps> hey! No! What? It's a lucky penny. That is not just a lucky penny, Willie. Really? It's a sleepy penny. It's gonna make you sleep through the rest of the night. That's amazing. It certainly would be. Well, Mr. Simmons, you've had a night to reflect. I'm gonna ask you if you'll resume child support payments. And if you give me an answer I don't like, I will send you to jail. Don't be stubborn, Morgan. Oh, now you care? Because the money river will stop flowing? I'd rather go to jail than pay these people any more money. You ever work in dry cleaning? Jail would be a holiday. Okay, well, hold on, Mr. Simmons, because there is one person we haven't heard from yet. Judge Gray, my concern is that Joel hasn't been properly prepared to hear certain information that he may find upsetting. No one is telling Joel anything, Mr. Singh. We are listening to him. Hi, Joel. I I'm Judge Gray. You can come down here. Hey. Do you know why you're here? My mom and dad are arguing about how much my mom lets me see my dad. And what do you think about that? They argue all the time. I mean, what do you think about your father? Your Honor... Aren't we slightly off topic here? We're past visitation. Uh, Miss Brady, I'm, I'm talking to Joel. If you won't pay child support, Mom says he doesn't deserve to see me. See? She twists everything. Joel, when you and your father do see each other, 
Do you do anything fun? Sure, we go to games. Once we go to Montreal and I got this jersey. Remember that, Dad? And, and do you do anything with your dad that, uh, that you don't do with your mom and Nick? Long division? <sighs> I'm useless at arithmetic. So is Nick. Go to chop socky movies. Hockey. Dad's good at hockey. So am I now. Like the best thing. Do you know what a slap shot is? Yeah. Nick tried to show me, but. Nick's a good guy. I like him. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you and Nick get along just fine, but um, but I, I'm more interested in your relationship with your father. Nick tried to teach me how to do a slap shot, but it was my dad who knew the secret. Should I tell him? Yeah, it's, it's... The secret is you got to hit the ice exactly three quarters of an inch behind the puck. Anyway, that's the secret my dad taught me. Your Honor, surely you're aware of how painful this is for my client. Well, it should be painful, Miss Brady. Well, thanks, Joel. You can wait out there for a minute. See ya. Kind of, yeah. But, you know, it's important to remember when you turn your back on Joel, you turn your back on something very precious in your life. Yeah, I withdraw. I, uh, withdraw them. You know, whatever. The law's right. I'm his dad. Mr. Simmons, you've been given a second chance. Don't blow it. Thank you. Good morning. What in heaven's name happened to your hair? I've been running my fingers through it in a distraught manner. Sean, if you are still angry with me for removing that child... That is not why I'm distraught. Stop me from hitting him. You're welcome. Well, I wish I'd hit him. You would have lost your job and your house. It would have been worth it. Oh, shoot. What? Zach Wiley is bringing civil action against DCF for seizing Katie Odonez. Don't worry. DCF is threatened with lawsuits all the time. This one names you and me personally. Oh, shoot. Hey, you have a nice time. Dr. McCarty made me an airplane. Oh. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> you will be happy to know that Willie had an uneventful night. Good. Good. Does he always have this much trouble sleeping? Yes, he does. Every night. But not with my sleepy penny. That worked, huh? But you better take it now. You look very, very tired. Thank you, Willie. I'll hold on to this till the next time you come in. <laughs> come on, baby. Thank you, Dr. McCarty. Come on. Bye, Willie. <laughs> Just between you and me. The only reason you brought Willie in here was so you could get a good night's sleep, right? No. <clears throat> it's more for my wife. Yeah. Uh, uh -oh. You're not married, so you may not understand. No, I... I think I do. Dr. Redica said it was okay. She said there was more than one kind of medical emergency. And as usual, Dr. Redeker was right.
Teddy Ordonez is seven years old. Total strangers come into her house and have sex with her parents. People have sex on her bed. Katie has to hide in her closet. Don't forget about the drug use. Ms. Gray photographed this drug paraphernalia at the scene. Th that's called a, a bong, Your Honor. I know what it is. I'm not your grandmother. Your Honor, DCF brought these same so-called facts before Judge Booten less than 48 hours ago. He ruled against them. Technically, it's a separate issue, Judge Drabowski. Nonsense. Pitch it any way you want, Miss Gray. Defied Judge Booten's wishes. No, no, Judge Drabowski, I would never do that. The first seizure was for sex, the second for drugs. Miss Gray is well known for her cowboy mentality. She's flaunting her disregard for the law. I don't hold with social workers to find judges. I can assure you, Miss Gray's only consideration was for the safety of the child. You've known me for years. I am not a cowboy. Pending a civil action against Mr. Potter, Miss Gray, and DCF, I demand Miss Gray be suspended immediately. Ms. Ordonez, is this true about the grip sex and the uh, drugs? It's grossly overstated, Your Honor. But do you have sex with various people on Katie's bed? No, not me. That was somebody else. That was definitely against the rules we set out for the party. Well, it's good to have rules. Who were these people having sex on Katie's bed? Well, they were new to our group, so we don't know them very well. They know them well enough to have sex, but not well enough to catch their names? All right. Let me ruminate. Judge Drabowski? I'm thinking. It's my opinion that Judge Booten was hasty in overturning the initial seizure of the child. Excellent. Your Honor, before you rule, I'm moving that you recuse yourself from this case. Why? Because Mr. Ordonez is a person of color. He's Latino, Your Honor. So he's Latino, so? Well, you have removed eight children of color from their parents in the last four months. Are you implying there's a pattern of racism in my decisions? No, no, Your Honor. Such a charge wouldn't be made here in court, but rather in the Judicial Review Committee. See what he knows. Does. You apologize for that remark immediately, Mr. Wiley. I cannot apologize for the truth, Your Honor. You're defying the direct order of a judge in open court. I'm within my rights. That's called contempt of court, Mr. Wiley. In what world? In my world, Mr. Wiley. Welcome to it. You take this man into custody for contempt of court. Fine. I, I withdraw the comment. No, too late. You had better rethink, Judge Drabowski. You have the reputation of an aging judge. Allegations of racism and erratic behavior could very well taint the end of what has been a long and well-regarded career. Go ahead. This is my last day. I retired. And who cares about the reputation of a retired judge? Get him out of here. And if he tries to escape, shoot him. Do you see what happens to people who defy judges, Miss Gray? I assure you, Judge Drabowski, I have learned my lesson. Good. I confirm the order of temporary custody and give over Katie Ordonez to your care. Next case. Honey, is, is this, is this too salty? Since when are you so fussy? Not for you, they're for Mr. Van Exel. Who came through for you, huh? I'm not proud of manipulating the system, but he came through for me big. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had a policy on muffins and bribery. We do. Cookies are bribes, and uh, we are against them in most cases. Muffins say thank you, and we are for them. As long as we're consistent. So, Mom, Lauren thinks that it's time for me to start dating. That's only because she has not been privy to the many dating disasters in your past. The too old one, the too young one, the too sensitive. Okay, the, the, the point is that 
she stopped thinking that Michael and I should get back together. She's growing up. It's kind of sad, isn't it? Very, very sad. Yet not in a bad way. May I come in? Jillian, of course. You're always welcome. Well, I thought maybe after yesterday, I didn't actually cancel anything, you know. I was upset. Hi, Jillian. And uh, excuse me, I, I have to go to the kitchen to get something. Jillian, I have undervalued all the work that you have done on behalf of Jared and me, and you have every right to be annoyed. I get caught up in things and all the excitement with the wedding. And I thought if I left it to you and Amy, you'd end up marrying a billionaire in your living room. And I don't mean that as a snotty comment. I know. We're fine. Hey, I'm back with this. I understand that you need me to back off. I know what a pain I can be. And really, I just want you and Jared to have the wonderful wedding that you so deserve. Ready for what? Oh. Oh my. <laughs> oh my God. I look good, don't I? Yes, like a grown-up. Uh, too too much of a grown-up. Yeah, honey, I I think you're a little, a little too young for for makeup and high heels. Mom. Might I offer a compromise? I'm not sure yet. No makeup, but perhaps a uh, a shoe with a modest heel. Oh, there are the cutest thing back here. Okay, sure, fine. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> well, I guess I should go. If if you decide that you need some help, then well, I'm I'm happy to chip in in a moderate way. Jillian, the fact is, I could use a little help. Really? It, not as much as before. Just a little. <laughs> I understand. So, what did we decide on the dancers and the cake? Did we pick a number? I do not want dancers. Oh, believe me, you'll be happy that I hired them. But we really need two cakes. One for decoration and one for eating. I don't want two cakes. Then you'll be happy on the day, believe me. Oh, Maxine, you see... One cake is more for show and for cutting, and the other cake is more for taste. <gasps> you might want a third to freeze for when you renew your vows on your 10th anniversary. A lot of couples find that it's the perfect time to amp up the old romance level. I guess the seven-year itch has become the 10-year itch. Who knew? Hmm. 